The heating sensor senses the temperature of the water in the reservoir tank. If the temperature of the water is not at the set point, usually 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius, a signal is sent to the control module to activate the solid state relay. This allows power to be applied to the heating elements. The heating elements will start to heat the water inside the reservoir tank and indicate heating in the display of the control panel. Once the water reaches the desired temperature, the heating sensor will signal the control module. This will turn off the power to the solid state relay and in turn shut off the power to the heating elements. Now that you know how a Wilbur Curtis brewing unit works, let's take a look at the electrical flow within the Gemini system. With the power supply connected to the unit, L1 and L2 supply power to the high limit switch and a neutral is supplied to the control module along with ground connected to the chassis. L1 line voltage then passes through the high limit switch to the toggle switch and also to terminal 1 of the solid state relay. If the fuse is in good condition, or if the unit doesn't have a fuse, the next thing you'll want to do is remove the brew cones, front cover, and warming deck from the unit. Check to see if voltage is present at the heating elements when the unit is calling for heat. To do this, set the multimeter to the 600 volts AC position. Click on the probes and drag them to the heating element terminals.